For today's quick tip, I'll be showing two ways to create a spun metal texture, such as you see here on the dial of the uh, watch. We're going to be using Photoshop for one method and a program called Filter Forge for the second method. So let's go ahead and get started with the Photoshop method. I'm going to pause Keyshot with Shift P. That's going to free up my CPUs for Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop, File, New. Now the key here is to use a high enough resolution that uh, you don't see any pixelation. You know, this is just like any other image we're going to be creating. Uh, you want to have enough resolution so that no matter what you're rendering at, you don't see pixelation in your texture. So if you're planning to do your image, your final render at a very high resolution, maybe for print, make sure you have enough resolution so that at full resolution when viewing your image, your render, you don't see any issues with textures. So I might bump this up to basically a 4,000 by 4,000 square image. Click OK. And I just have a white background. What I'm going to do is set my foreground and background colors to black and white. And then I'm going to go to filter, noise, add noise. I just crank this noise all the way up. And here's my settings. We're going to leave monochromatic on so that we don't get any color in there. And OK. Now, let's look at this at full resolution here. So it's just a bunch of black and white noise. Pretty simple. What we're going to do is use the filter blur, radial blur, to spin this noise around. And you can play with these settings to get the right result, but let's just go with maybe best quality, spin mode, and amount 25. Now, this blur center here can be changed. If it's off center, hold down the Alt key and then you can press reset to get that back to, to the very center there. So let's go to 25 and click OK. OK, and then there's our spun texture. Now, the thing about doing, it, doing this method is it makes the center look a little bit chunky. So what I want to do is just uh, do a little trick to make that look a little bit better. So before we do that, let's just look at the texture here. This is all looking pretty good. And like I said, you can just fine tune how much you spin it and those other settings there. So over here in layers, I'm going to just duplicate this layer here. So this is going to be the trick to make the center look better. So I'm going to use Control J to duplicate. And then, let me just zoom out here, I'm going to make a mask a nice soft radial mask based around the center. So I'm going to hold Alt, Shift, and then click and drag with the Marquee tool here set to Circle Mode. Make that selection there. I'm going to go to Select, Refine Edge. I'm just going to feather this a little bit. 50, maybe 100 pixels. And if it seems like it might be touching the edge, I'm just going to shift the edge in a little bit. About like that. That creates a soft selection. And now I'm just going to click the mask button right here. And that creates a mask. So you see what we have there if I turn off the background layer. Now I'm simply going to take this layer, hit Control T, and scale that uniformly in so that it, it becomes basically a more detailed center. So you can kind of play with that, maybe to about 50% scale here. And let's just zoom in on that. And I'll just hide that so you can kind of see we're just packing more details into that space. All right. And this is just a black and white image that can be used directly in Keyshot as a bump texture. So all I have to do now is save it out. New file, save as. And we'll call this one, save it as a JPEG. It doesn't need to be anything special. We're going to call this the PS Spun. I'm going to use full quality here. We don't want to lose any details. All right, so let's just go to Keyshot now that we have our image on pause. I have a, a glass outer portion here that I'm going to hide, right click, hide part, and then right click on my metal, edit part, or edit material. Over here in the textures, we're going to double click on the bump, and I'm going to replace my current bump with the PS spun. It's going to take just a second to load in, and there we go. Now. It's already mapped based on what I had on here before, but a couple other settings are incorrect for this texture. 
Most notably, it's the normal map mode. That's not going to work for this black and white texture. This is not a normal map, so let's disable that. And I have a very low bump height. I'm not going to see a lot of detail because my, my texture doesn't have a lot of contrast. So I'm going to need to bump that height a little bit up. Now I want to use my scale slider to bring that down. Okay, so you see here, this is too small of a scale. We see the edges of the texture. And the reason we see the edges here rather than it repeating is because I have repeat disabled right here. So it would look like this if I didn't have that. So I'm going to leave that disabled because I don't need repeat on for this texture. But I, now I just need to scale this up to the point that it covers everything I want it to cover. Now you'll notice I'm in planar Z mode. That's what's projecting straight onto this face. And in order to get it centered like I have here, what I need to do is click to where I want it to be centered. So I'm just going to hide all these parts real quick. I'll show you how I get that centered. All right, let's just hide our little hand there. All right, so there's a little pin here symbolizing the center. This is also what the hands are rotating around. And if I click position, I can now click anywhere on the surface to center that texture. So let's just look at where we are here. So I can click over here, and of course it centers on where I clicked. Let it res up for a second. We see all of our little light anisotropic lighting effects kind of scattering out from that point. So what I want to do is zoom in on this little point. If I right click and I say look at, it's going to make it easy to zoom in on that. Zoom in using either the scroll wheel or alt right click and drag. Now I'm just going to click directly under my little pin here. There we go. Nice and centered. Kind of look from above. Make sure it's right. That's definitely close enough. All right. Now that I have it centered, again, just going to click done and make sure I have enough scale so that it covers the entire surface. I'm just going to nudge that up. I'm just nudging this value with my scroll wheel to get it just finely incremented. And there is basically my brush texture applied. Now you may notice this brush texture, the main, re the main reason to use the Photoshop method over what I'm about to show is that this gives a more irregular and kind of like roughly brushed look to it. Uh, the next method is going to give a very uniform, very uniform grooves that create a very consistent effect, which is sometimes what you want, but sometimes this is what you want, where it's got sort of this uh, more, you could call it more naturally brushed kind of by hand sort of look. So, and of course we can, we can fine tune some things here. Um, the bump height, if I bring that down, I'm going to get less of the drastic effect from these little grooves in the surface. If I bring it up, I'm going to get more of that effect. So somewhere for this texture, somewhere around one, it's pretty good. And then of course other things come into play, such as the properties under properties. Roughness definitely plays a big, big role here in how it catches the light. If I bring the roughness up, then I effectively see less effect from the grooves. So if the roughness goes up, I might actually want to bring my bump height up as well. This is kind of too bright, so I might bring my color down a little bit. So you can really fine-tune these settings to get exactly what you want. All right, now the second method is with FilterForge. It's this program here. Just go on uh, the internet and search for Filter Forge right here, Filter Forge, and you'll find this. You can get a, a free trial of it. And what we're going to be doing is using a filter that you can download from their online library, and it is called Groovy. Okay, and this is the default that it starts as. But what we're going to do is go to Settings. Well, first thing I'm going to do is go to File, and you can't see it, it's off screen here. Well, let's just do this. File, new image, and I'm going to use, I'm going to do basically the same size that I did for Photoshop, 40, 96 by 40, 96. So remember, I want enough resolution that I don't ever see pixelation issues. Let's move this back into the frame. There we go. So now with, with my groovy filter here, I'm going to go to settings, and I'm going to set my way of the groove to one, how groovy. This controls how many little grooves there are. I'm going to crank that all the way to 100. And, uh, well, let's just leave that a little bit lower for now so we see the effects of the next settings. I'm going to take my groove vibration down. You see what that's doing. 
I want these nice smooth grooves for this effect. And everything else now that groove vibration is down doesn't really matter. These settings aren't going to play a role in what we're doing. Now the, the important thing here is we want to increase the size all the way to, to, to 4096. The max size here depends on the, on the resolution of the image you created and when you did file new image. So for me, with this resolution, it's 4096. Now that I have these settings kind of set in, I'm going to just bring my How Groovy right up to 100. And that will give me a nice densely packed in set of grooves. I'm also going to enable seamless tiling. This will give me some options for when, if I want to use this for another effect, which is this repeating groove effect. So you can use, there's several different styles of groove here that you can choose from if you just change the way of the groove. Um, but for what we're doing, we're just going to stick on one here. And now what I want to do is output a normal map of this that I can use in Keyshot. So I'm going to go to Filter. Let's move this over just a bit. So Filter, Render Maps. Oh, Got to go a little bit more. Filter, Render Maps, and enable Normal Map Mode. See what that does over here? Creates that normal map look with these very specific RGB values describing exact height information that Keyshot can use. Now that I have that, just need to go to Save Image. And we will do, I'm going to call this FF Spun for Filter Forge. Again, just JPEG is fine, but full quality is important. So click OK. And that just takes a second to render. All right, and there's, we're all saved. So now we can go back over to Keyshot. So let's unpause this. And I'm going to bring back, since I already have this all mapped, I'm just going to bring back the rest of my parts here. Let's not be in performance mode so that we can actually see things. There we go. All right, so this is our current texture. And as I let it render up here, you kind of see the the nice look of it. It's got that, uh, like I was saying, that sort of natural hand brushed look. But uh, let's switch in this new texture. Go to the textures tab on our material, double click, and ffspun.jpg. Okay, and that loads in. Now this is a normal map, so we definitely want to go down here and enable normal map mode. And now this normal map has plenty of height information that we don't need to crank up our bump height in order to see it. So I'm going to bring this actually way down to point 0.1 here. That's already, that's got good grooves to it. Now I want to bring down my scale so that we get just the right amount of grooves to fill the surface and by bringing down the scale of course the grooves are tightly packed in so we get less noticeable grooves but it still is creating that light effect sort of that bottom of the uh, pan sort of effect that that you might see in real life and again I can just change my roughness a little bit by bringing my roughness down I get these highlights they spread around less of the overall circles of grooves there so you get darker spots and brighter spots more contrast between the low lights and highlights I'm just going to zoom out here and we'll see that from a little bit of a, a further distance so there you go that's that nice groove effect creating those anisotropic highlights you can also just for comparison's sake see see what we have here zoom in just a bit render this up a little bit and of course just a simple surface without those grooves would look like this so we're not getting any of that sort of radial highlight effect now another little quick area that might be nice to put those grooves on is right here on the end of the crown I'm going to double click on this surface textures bump map double click bring in my ff spun and then again I can just bring down the scale to pack in those grooves and as I showed before now let's make sure we enable normal map since this is a different material lower my bump height you can see I can use the scroll wheel to really fine-tune that bump height even at 0.01 this this bump map creates a pretty decent effect so we really don't need much bump height on something like this and again I can use position to just move that around on that surface so now my center point's kind of here but what we want of course with this is just nicely in the center 
one little trick for centering this is bring the scale down just a little bit too much so that it's so that the edges are right at about the edges of the circle that your circular object you're trying to place it on and you can kind of use those ref those edges as a reference point for the center and then just nudge it up one little bit and now it's covering the surface and projecting out to the edge just just about right now of course lighting plays an important part here see on on here right now we're not getting much interesting effect but if i bring my bring my environment around a little bit or change my camera angle just a little bit we start to see that radial effect on that crown and then of course there's the there's the roughness that we can continue to use to fine tune that